all together, Spooky, the Adams family. Okay, are you ready? <clears throat> <coughs> Feels like there's a lot of table. Should there be less table? Maybe. Can you sit up? Can you smile? Hmm? What does that have to do with anything? Are you Jeffrey? Scary. Spooky, scary skeletons That's and it. shivers down my spine. Harrow County is a small, rural community, maybe not all that far from where you live. It's the kind of place you might miss if you were passing through, if you blinked, or maybe turned a wary eye from your surroundings. At night, strange figures move through lonely, forgotten places. When thunder rumbles and lightning flashes as bright as witches' fire, you might glimpse inhuman shapes lumbering through blasted heaths. Harrow County is a haunted place, a place where the haints grow restless and uneasy. If you're planning on spending some time in Harrow, it's best to know a few charms or curses, depending on your disposition, and have a few friends by your side. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Exactly. We are here today to do another episode of Pumped Up Kickstarters. Aren't we? Bet you didn't see that one coming. I didn't. We're talking today about a game that is coming to Kickstarter. It is coming to Kickstarter on October 4th. And what is that game? Who wants to know? You guys do. It's Harrow County from Off the Page Games. This is a prototype. This is a prototype. See? Nothing on the back. Excitement on the front. Harrow County was sent to us by Off The Page Games and Jay Cormier, so thank you so much for sending this along. This video is going to be a preview of the game, and we also will have a full playthrough for you. Indeed. Isn't that exciting? Let's talk a little bit about Harrow County. The game was designed by Jay Cormier and Shad Miller, art by Tyler Cook, and graphic design by Alexandra Billick. This game is a game of conflict. Gothic. Gothic game conflict. Game of conflict. Jeff and I have played this game many, many times, so we are going to give a you a lot. So we are going to give you a little bit of an overview of this game and what you can expect from Harrow County. This game is a scenario-based game. It's broken down into chapters. The prototype version that we got came with five different chapters. Mm -hmm. Of those five, we have played four because the fifth one requires a third person. And I don't know if you knew this. We don't have that. It's just one, two. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four. Shut the door. Five, six. Pick up sticks. Seven, eight. Lay them straight. Nine, ten. Begin again. I didn't know the rest of it. Really? No. That's impressive. Thank you. Well done. I am impressive, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. In this game, you are going to be set as a different faction. So you can either, in the first three chapters, now of course, as we mentioned, this is a prototype, so the final game, the chapters may look a little different, yeah. but how this game is set up, every chapter introduces a new feature, helping to introduce the game more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So in the first three chapters of the prototype, you can play as either... The family. Or... I don't know the other one. The protectors. That's right, Jeffrey. Jeff always plays as the family. I've only played as the family. I really like playing as the family. In the first few chapters, you are going to be playing as either the protectors or the family. Each has different objectives that they need to accomplish. Yeah, not only that, you can play different members of the family and they all play a bit asymmetrically. Exactly, yes. So all the factions play asymmetrically in the way that they do their actions. Then within each faction, there's three different characters that you can choose from. Typically what you would do, you'd start the game, you'd pick one of the members of that clan, let's call it a clan, you'd set up that way, and then you'd play the game. The next time you could play the exact same scenario, you could play it with different members of the faction and completely change up the game. Asymmetric where there, there might be a specific player power that changes up a little bit. Precisely. The objectives are the same over chapter, 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 based on what we've played. And for the family, their objective is always to... Destroy. The... Houses. Exactly. Which Villages, you, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, which you can see in our playthrough. Mm -hmm. The protectors, on the other hand, are trying to get the townsfolk back to their home. Mm -hmm. And then as you progress, and in chapter four, which is when we did the playthrough on, there's a new character introduced called Cammy. 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 
I'm, it's definitely Cammy. And Cammy and her goblins are trying to find her doll that has stolen her essence. Her life essence. It's freaking rude. Don't steal people's essences. Yeah, don't steal people's life essences. I literally can't even. In the following scenario, the new character that gets introduced is Hester, and I'm very excited to mm. try that out. As we mentioned, it is essentially a battle game. You are each mm -hmm. competing to seven points. You can gain points a few different ways. Mm -hmm. The first way is by fighting and destroying each other's haints. Jeffrey, what are haints? Haints are basically little creatures that you can summon out of the ground. They build them out yeah. of like little mud and stuff. Real sloppy. And they're like your little minions that yeah. do your little bidding and they attack for you. And you can kill them and they can kill other things. By killing off haints, that's one way that you get points. Usually killing one haint equals one point. However, mm -hmm. as you progress in the game, it gets harder and harder to gain points by killing haints. Correct. So that's one way that you can get points. Another way is by leaving somebody in the brambles. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It sucks sitting in the brambles, so you deserve a point if you're in there by the end of the round. Yeah, the brambles is like a hex in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to defend. Normally it takes two hits to remove a haint, but if you're in the brambles, it only takes one. Exactly. So it's hard to defend. But if you can stay there, end of round, you'll get a point. And then the final way to collect points is by scoring your objectives. So every time the family destroys a building, they get two points. Every time the protectors get a townsfolk back to town, they get two points. And with Cammie, when she finally finds her doll, she gets four points. Mm -hmm. I really like the family mechanic because ultimately, how do you destroy a building? You're putting out these storm tokens okay. all over the map and you have to like draw these storm tokens from your home location to the buildings that you're trying to destroy. It's really, really cool. So this game is one to three player. The first few scenarios, so chapters one to four within the prototype are two player only. Mm -hmm. Then when you get into the later chapters, they introduce that third character, which is Hester. Mm -hmm. As you're playing this game, you are taking different actions. You're doing different turns back and forth. Three turns equals a round and you're actually taking taking actions based on these mason jars that are in front of you, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool because really everything within this game is super thematic. So if you think about it, like your actions are being held within these like magical mason jars. When you flip it over, it's a broken jar and you can't use that action mm -hmm. anymore. So the actions that you can do, you can find ability tokens, you can gain wild actions, you can fight, and you can trigger your legend ability, which is another way that the asymmetry comes into effect mm -hmm. here. Each character has its own specific legend ability that it's able to do. And then each faction has like a legend ability that they can do as well in terms of like like Jeff mentioned the family can put out storms mm -hmm. for Cammy she can reuse her goblin cards because Cammy comes with goblin cards etc. If you are interested in something that has asymmetry but not to such an extreme that it completely changes the game. Again it's a very I would say surface level asymmetry like you have your ability that you can do and you don't need to learn everyone else's ability like mm -hmm. in order to win kind of deal. It doesn't hinder anyone that's adverse to asymmetry. So essentially the way the game plays, you take turns back and forth, you go through different rounds until finally someone reaches seven points. And once that happens, the game ends. Mm -hmm. And that can happen really quickly or that can take a little while depending on your strategy and how you play the game. And the strategy definitely builds up. As I mentioned before, it gets a little bit more strategic yeah. as you go along. So Perfect. the objectives might become a little bit harder to achieve or killing haints may become a little bit harder to get points by. That is essentially Hero County from what we have played. In terms of the strategy, it's very chess-like. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's very strategic in moving the piece, your pieces in the right direction and setting yourself up for like a couple turns down the road. There's only so many spaces on the board and each of you are trying to win by getting your objective and everything's very visible. So you almost have to be kind of like uh, sneaky and be like, okay, I'm going to move some of these over here so that maybe she'll focus over here, but mm -hmm. I'm really wanting to do something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's chess like You are building out your strategy while also having to keep in mind what the other person's mm -hmm. objective is. Because as you will see in our playthrough, you can get foiled because some person will just mess up with your strategy every chance that they can possibly get. That will definitely happen. As the game goes on, you get progressively more and more powerful, which is constantly pushing you to end game. It's making you stronger so you can do more things to continue to push for end game. Who is this game for? This game is definitely for somebody or a pair of people, one to two players, 
mm -hmm. then sometimes three. They are working on a solo mode as well. So yep. that is potentially coming out with the Kickstarter, which is really exciting. So Sorry, I'm going to cut you off. We should talk about the tree. <gasps> How could I freaking forget? Mm -hmm. One last Rewind. thing we want to talk about. The box itself is a cube tray thing, a cube tower. dice tower thing. So when you battle, you'll drop cubes up here and they'll come out of this the killing tree. The killing uh, tree. Onto the battleground, which will be down here, which you'll see in the playthrough. Mm -hmm. But this is really cool. Who is this game for? If you're a two player only household, this could be a great option for you because it plays, I would assume, best at two for most scenarios. Once again, not yeah. when you get into later scenarios. Yep. It's also for you if you enjoy creepy themes. Yeah. The theme of this game is based the, on a comic. It is based on a comic. Yeah. The theme of this game is very creepy. It's pretty dark. It's gothic, as it mentions. Mm -hmm right here on the title, Gothic Conflict. Yeah. If you're into like that kind of creepy type of theme, this is definitely has that. It can get, a, it can get mean. Oh, this is uh, a mean game. Yeah, it in can, the best get, possible it can way. get mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, which we love. We love mean games. It can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. It can be super rewarding when something pays off for you. I just think it's very puzzly in what you're trying to achieve. Yes. And I really, really uh, found that kind of fascinating that mm -hmm. they've turned a battle game into like this kind of like strategic two-player chess like game yeah <laughs> I, I don't want to keep saying chess but it really is it's yeah. really kind of like chess you kind of have to think out your moves Definitely. ahead so that would be who this game is for the theme and the story is very heavily implemented throughout the entire game so every chapter you get another piece of that story and you mm -hmm. get to learn about the family and the protectors and about cami and, the, and, town. and the town and the tree and all of these things so if you are into super thematic creepy games Coming to Kickstarter on October 4th. If you are interested in learning even more about this game and seeing how it plays, then please definitely check out the playthrough because that will give you a really good idea. We also, we talk out everything that we do within the playthrough, so it might give you a little bit better try and, idea. Try and give you as much context as possible. Yeesh, as we do. Anyways, that is Hero County. I think that's all that we have for today. If you're interested in buying Hero County, once again, check it out on Kickstarter. All information will be below. And that's all we have. If you're interested in buying other board games, check out your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. It sure the heck is. You know what? It sure the heck is. It sure the heck is. Heckin' yes. That's all we have. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. Oh, it's because I put this further away is what happened. Mm-hmm. What? Down a little bit. Usually you can't see that much of the games above us, right? Okay, I believe you. That's how you're gonna get you're gonna go. Scary, spooky, terrifying. Is that how the song goes? Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about Why do you always say the Foster the Meeple? Foster the Meeple. I don't know. Because we are Just Foster curious. the. Wait, but there's something, can I get it? Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple. A <laughs> uh not on your hat. And you know what? I was going to say it doesn't matter who wins, but that will give too much away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look at the light. It's not working. It's gone. What if I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that works.